NFT a fad or foundational? Can I move my NFTs to other blockchains? Where are investors focusing their activities in the market? And what is so good about NFTs anyway? Welcome to Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and all the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. It's what we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. Well, you know, the big story this year, and we've been talking about it for a while now in blockchain, has been the growth of non-fungible tokens, or better known as NFTs. But success comes the haters. NFTs have had its fair share of criticisms this year. And one of the most popular dismissals of NFTs is it's useless, as in what's the use case of a unique digital picture anyway? But for others, it's only the beginning. Don't judge before this has had a chance to bloom into something more, they say. Well, today we're here to explain and explore that something more, what the NFT revolution could look like. And joining me today is the co-founder of Zillica, an ecosystem that's gearing up to sprint into the world of NFTs, recently launching the Zillbridge mainnet for its interoperability with Ethereum. He's also an investor in this ecosystem with more to come. And Max Cantelia, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. It's super to be here, Angie. Thank so you. much is happening, and I want you to catch us up on what is happening with Zillica, a lot of developments in this space, a lot of developments with you, with Zillica, and, uh, and I want you to tell us all about it. Okay. Uh, well, you're absolutely right that there, there is a lot happening. The, the high-speed train has definitely left the tracks, the, the station. Angie, I think the, the time has come for Zilliqa to, to really mature. And, and I choose that word very carefully because I think it applies to just about every component of the, of, of the company. And when I'm a longstanding entrepreneur and investor and every company has its tipping point. And I do feel that Zilliqa has reached a very, very important tipping point just now. And it's time to really move into second or third, third gear. Excuse the car analogies. They'll come fast and furious. But it's time to move up a gear. And okay. so to, to really summarize, uh, I feel that the time has come to really look at how we can commercialize our technology to the point where anybody particularly in the enterprise world, whether they be big brands or whether they be SMEs or even startups, can integrate what they want to do with Zilliqa very, very easily. Frictionless is, I think, the right word. So I think at a technology level, and it's not just Zilliqa, but I think the industry needs to, to get to a point where integrating with, with these blockchain layer ones especially becomes seamless. And as much as that might sound like a lofty goal to some, I feel that the, the time is right now. And, and partly that's because, as you mentioned in your, in your introduction, the, the space is, is lighting up. There are, there are green lights all over the place. And that's because we're seeing real use cases that can scale now. And some of this was theory a few years ago, and I think it's now becoming absolute reality. And indeed, if we're going to extrapolate that further and see more growth in these use cases, NFTs being a, a very important one, then I think technologically still a lot has to happen. It's still Internet 1996 in some ways, in, in my opinion. And so building, building more usable technology only really comes through bringing people into the camp that have the experience of doing these things in reality. And mm. so you're going to see more new team members coming on board, people that have done this before with, with yeah. deep, complex technologies, and that can bring that dimension to the, the technology layer. So I think these these are th these are very important points because 
Every team has bandwidth. And we need to keep adding bandwidth if we are indeed going to, to move forward at the rate that I certainly would like Zilliqa and its yeah. ecosystem to develop. So, so those, are, those are some of the key, key things that I would say are, are, are going on, Angie. Um, my personal drivers at the moment, completely, by the way, just to be clear about this, completely driven by the Zilliqa engine. Everything I do is driven by, by the Zilliqa engine. Uh, is to globalize our brand, is to bring enterprises and big brands to, to Zilliqa and its ecosystem. And in terms of certainly my forays into this ecosystem, before Christmas, I'm going to be announcing some incredible new ventures that will be built atop of this, uh, this, this engine into the Zilliqa ecosystem, which I think are going to have massive impact on, on industries and certain industry mm. sectors that I'm really passionate about. So, so these are, these are some of the, some of the, the things that, that we, can, we can hopefully look forward to before the year is over. I want to unpack a lot of, of what you're saying. Um, you know, for, for a lot of people who are just joining this space, those people are not OGs, as we'd call them, or developers or engineers or even anybody. A anybody who's just joining now is enterprise grade. They are from industry. They are really discovering it because blockchain is impacting those verticals, those enterprises. Um, but in the early onset of blockchain and development of blockchain, it very much was developer driven. It very much was protocol driven. I mean, we were talking about some of the smartest developers, some of the smartest brains in this space. I, uh, you know, you were very early on, Vitalik Buterin, you know, these are, these are developers who are working on code. That was the first support layer of blockchain. What I'm hearing from you when you use the word maturity is that in order for the next stage of blockchain, and we've witnessed this ourselves at Forecast just reporting on the ecosystem, is that enterprises and use of blockchain in industry now needs to accelerate. So when you say maturity and you're hinting to adding different team members you know, to kind of create those enterprise products. It really sounds like at Zillica, and you come from kind of that world of traditional finance, that you're bringing that maturity of other industries now, that kind of thinking to Zillica. That's what yes. it sounds like. Yes, that, that, that's exactly right, Angie. I, I believe that preaching to the converted isn't good enough anymore. We, just, just as with the dawn of the internet, in the early stages of the internet, there were hobbyists. There were, there were people that were completely committed to this, this technological revolution. And the blockchain revolution has not been any different to that. And whilst I believe that those people that really are already converted to the use of cryptocurrencies, understand how blockchain can be so impactful. My aim is really to open the eyes of those people that aren't inside of that group, because the world that lives outside of the, the, the crypto converts is enormous. And mm -hmm. just as in 1997, if you'd asked a big brand whether they would ever have a website, Remember pets.com? Uh, you probably don't. You're too young. I, I think that I, th I think I think that most most people would have laughed you out of the room. And that point is coming where enterprises and big brands, especially with the dawn of the NFT, are beginning to take notice. However, there is a lot of educating to be done, and I spent quite a lot of my time speaking at private internal conferences with family offices, with financial institutions of all shapes and sizes, really educating them on the, the benefits of this technology and not just whether they should invest in cryptocurrencies or not. 
So I I feel that it's very important that we we educate people and then we get these these people to understand how indeed they can use this 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 technology to the benefit of their own businesses. And I have to tell you I'm I'm very excited because I've spent the last 9 months speaking to some of the biggest luxury brands in the world and owners of those luxury brands who have no idea what what blockchain is or or any of that some of them actually don't even even use email but it it's fantastic when when I'm speaking to these people to see the light bulb moments come on mm. and it's amazing to see this happen but there is a driver behind it angie there's a there's a there's a real uh there's a driver and that driver is that all of these large luxury brands in and i i i talk about luxury brands because of something that i'm going to tell you about a little bit later on i hope i i speak about luxury brands because luxury brands are constantly looking for new channels to new markets yep. and a lot of these people have now realized let's let's look at what's happened to some of the biggest brands on the planet whether we're talking about high fashion brands or le- leather goods the entire shape of their product base has in many ways evolved through discovering new channels to market for example china okay yeah. there are brands which i used to dearly love let's say 10 years ago and i could just about get away with wearing that i can't even wear anymore because i'd probably look like a clown and and so the the point is that the point is that that i think the the big brands are beginning to see that there are new channels new markets that they can be marketing and selling into and that offers them further scalability in their businesses and and that's the key point um you're a commercial person as as am i and when when i see that happen that is a major yep. tipping point andy i mean we're i we're talking about nfts we're talking about metaverse we're talking about so much of that but it all also kind of boils down to is the technology there and this is where i want to find out a little bit more from you on zillbridge you just deployed the mainnet for zillbridge this is a cross chain interoperability bridge built on zillica it allows uh use of ethereum uh it supports the movement of uh wrapped btc which also is ethereum yes. based ethereum usdt between Zillica and Ethereum. So that's super important especially in the NFT space. It's super important in DeFi. So how is this now mainnet going to allow you to explore these enterprise relationships more meaningfully? I I think this is a huge step Angie because let's let's face it today whether we're talking about nfts or defi the asset base that sits upon ethereum is is one of the it's it's the largest in the world today and when developers want to develop a dapp when enterprise people decide they want to look at blockchain it it's typically the first place people go to and and there's the very very good reasons for that However, I do believe that the 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 architecture has become a little bit of an issue because it's become so successful mm-hmm. and we've seen what I call traffic jams on the network which unfortunately other than increasing the 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 time for a, uh, the settlement of a transaction the gas price that people have to pay oh, yeah. in order to do a transaction has at times become completely uneconomical which really wasn't the thesis for for decentralized yeah. public blockchains and and therefore i feel that for people that want to port their digital assets 
to an environment where the transaction fee is lower, the efficiency, um, the, the uh, you know, the, I, I suppose something that we've been talking about now for about four or five months is just environmental friendliness, um, which, which are all of the things we designed into Zilliqa when it was first created back in, back in 2017. I feel that those characteristics are now becoming extremely important, particularly when we start to look at applications that are going to create bigger traffic jams than we've ever seen before. And therefore, being able to port to a, a platform where we can solve those, those issues for builders, for enterprise customers, even, even individuals, I, I think this is a huge step. And, and this, to me, is a, a really strong example of interoperability. Um, I, I, do not, I do not see a world, even in 30 years' time, where, the, where there are only going to be less than a handful of, of blockchains. I, I, don't, I don't see that for a moment, Angie. You know, in the 90s, we saw the growth of what we call, today we call the systems and integration industry. Oracle and SAP and PeopleSoft all talk to each other. Um, and 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 that's that's the the vision that I have for this space. Yeah. Different totally blockchain platforms that. have to talk to each other. Um, they have to talk and, to each other. They absolutely do. Yeah. So so I believe that the bridge is a huge step forward, and I'm really looking forward to cooperating and working with other chains too in the future to enable their customers to to be able to to do things upon Zilliqa as much as they may be on 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 their own chains and and so this collaboration which i'm beginning to sense now is is uh, it's it's massively important for for the industry as a whole it's you know it's the only way in our view or in my view that it can grow um you're totally right once upon a time it was which blockchain will rule them all i mean that was that was something that a lot of people talked about in the early days and and i think what DeFi has shown us what nfts have shown us what this entire space has shown us and layer twos have shown us is that interoperability is absolutely um you know what that next stage of growth is going to be so in yes. the nft space Let's talk about that a little bit more. You talked sure. about the luxury uh, industry, the luxury goods industry, the NFTs. I'm thinking, you know, the NFTs, the, the metaverse universe that, that we're kind of existing in right now. What are the opportunities that you're seeing? What are the opportunities that this industry is seeing? And when you talk about creating new markets for enterprise, particularly the luxury goods market, what is it that you... Are building towards okay so i think that the those three letters have become they've become pervasive in every aspect of our lives you know london cab drivers uh family friends everybody wants to know about what, what NFT, nft actually means and what it might mean for them so this this is a ubiquitous term now and in the same way that e-commerce now means a thousand different things, so, so does so does so does the term NFT. I, I believe that it it does mean different things for different people, and it's an overarching term. We shouldn't think about it as just being one thing or another. And I believe that now that we are rapidly hurtling through the experimental phase, where people can understand the art of the possible, you know, what is it, what is actually, what is it actually that this technology provides us? Actually, in some ways, we're harking back to 2016, 2017. I, I remember standing up at conferences then and talking about provenance and talking about things that actually I'm interested in. I'm a collector. I, I've, you know, I, I collect lots of different things. I don't bore you with that right now. But the provenance of anything that I collect has always been very important to me. I like telling people the narrative, the source, the origin of whether it be a bottle of wine or a, or a piece of art, in, indeed. And so actually, whilst NFTs have 
only really come into 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 the limelight in the last i'd say eight or nine months the idea of using blockchain technology for provenance has been there since it first started it was the thing actually that really got me hooked mm. and so i think that whether it be whether it be fashion brands whether it be major artists whether it be musicians people are beginning to see a few things i would say that 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 are light bulb moments N- number one is that okay you can create a digital asset where you have this proof of on- ownership that the blockchain allows us but we have to be careful between proof of on- ownership and copyright too those are those are two different things and maybe we'll touch on those a little bit later on but i see big brands beginning to see how if they indeed enter the digital product world then for the first time they can ensure provenance for their 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 customers the vision that i have is slightly different however angie because mm-hmm. i believe that long duration and i mean the next 30 40 50 years is going to come from brands being able to produce digital assets that sit alongside physical ones okay and 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 therein lies i believe the um the the secret to longevity in this space particularly if we're talking about those people that aren't rationally going to look at some file on their on their dropbox or their server every day of the every day of the week for the next 5 years because they 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 paid a thousand dollars for it okay yeah. and so in my in my vision it's about what some people are calling the digital world you know it's it's a combination of create creating digital assets alongside physical ones and i'm really excited um because i i'm currently looking at some incredible technologies that i hope i can bring into the basilica ecosystem that are really going to help to solve some of those issues that exist around how do you indeed prove that this physical item you know this this pen is indeed what it's supposed to be even if we have a digital counterpart and i'm yeah. looking forward to bridging that gap too with some exceptional technologies that i'm i'm looking at right now and we're only we we're, we're as with everything we're limited by our imaginations we're scratching the surface every day i have a another new idea for what a what a brand a big brand could do with this technology um but another key point angie is that we have to find the right venues for these these large brands and i'm hoping that we are before christmas going to to be able to announce something that is i think the first of its kind that provides an environment where the world's biggest brands the biggest luxury brands will feel comfortable in being able to showcase their their digital assets alongside with with their physical counterparts and uh it's it's not far away i can i can tell you that so well so, there's a lot yeah. of platforms that are uh, that are in this space right now um many of them are those uh crypto exchanges they you know and other nft exchanges we are seeing that but are you saying that there will also be a physical or a storefront or bricks and mortars that we could see affiliated or associated with this is this I mean you're yes. dropping a lot of hints. I want to I want to understand. Okay, so so yes, a bricks and mortar. So analog meets digital and it's going to be Zilliqa Correct. in the NFT Correct. space. Correct. And in the luxury NFT space in particular. Interesting. So I'm imagining you could you know, a one of a kind couture piece from you know, insert brand here and there's also a digital representation that you could wear in your metaverse whichever you know whichever one you're you're in and then you'd actually have the physical version as well something like that absolutely right 
absolutely right. Okay, that sounds yeah. really super cool and exciting. I've yeah. also wondered, you know, and, and this is very interesting because a lot of people are still kind of stuck in the, oh, it's art, it's sports memorabilia, it's collectible space. You're talking about a whole new ball game here, especially, especially associating it with a physical representation of that asset. Can, what are your thoughts in real estate? What are your thoughts in other assets that actually exist in the physical space, in the physical realm, that actually has a lot of uh, value that can be unlocked potentially with NFTs? I'm just curious your thoughts. I, I, I think that we could probably think of an NFT application for most real life services and products gen genuinely you've you've mentioned one you've mentioned real estate and of course there are already examples of how people are using blockchain technology to facilitate real estate transactions but let me come in with a little bit of a little bit of not bad news, but, but let's call it uncertainty around, around some of these, these use cases, real estate potentially being one of them, which is that the use cases I've seen for real estate on blockchain thus far are, in fact, fractionalizing real estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the moment we start to fractionalize real estate... Uh, this this word called regulation starts to come into play. And therefore, I think that today there are uncertainties around regulation, wherever in the world you happen to be, by the way. There are uncertainties about what that regulation is indeed going to allow you to do with, with NFTs. And I, I, I feel that we cannot ignore this. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we can talk about regulation until the cows come home, but it's vital, it's necessary, yeah. and yeah. it's good. And I'm, I, I, I'll, talk about, I'll talk about a country I know well because I happen to live there. I think, I think the UK, for example, it's not just the UK, others are doing similar things, is trying to balance innovation with customer protection, which, which is what a regulator should be doing, okay? But whilst there is some writing on the wall, you know, whether we look at, um, whether we look at what the US is trying to do, uh, you know, with the, with the US infrastructure bill, whether we look at what the FATF is trying to do today, there is no law yet. There is nothing in place. But I think if we look at, um, as an example, I don't know, if, let's look at China right now. It's really interesting to see what's going on. And you, you, you've probably been following the space, but of I find it fascinating to see that whilst the Chinese government is obviously banning cryptocurrencies, and, and we've, we've, we've seen you know, many, many different flavors of this coming from China. And we, I think we all understand, those of us that understand how China works, understand that, that they have a certain policy and this supports their policy, which is, which is fine. However, when you look at the government's stated vision for technology, blockchain technology is in the top yeah. five. Yeah, so what's happening in China right now is really interesting because you know, Tencent, Alibaba have have been experimenting with NFTs, as you may have seen. But what they're all trying to do is to decouple uh, cryptocurrency from the blockchain. And so there's a lot of experimentation going on. Mm -hmm. But you're 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 hitting the sides of the the, the regulation um, window here, and 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 this is where I think, um, you know. Your original question was about which other assets. I think many, many other assets could come on board, but I think regulation may may have a a role to play in that. That's, that, a great that, point. that's my response. That's great. I mean, China specifically has been paying attention uh, to the cryptocurrency activity space. You know, K 
capital control, all of that stuff is very specific to that. NFTs, they've so far left alone, but you know, from this moment when we're talking to when Word on the Block actually airs, that could change. It could change in the next five minutes, could change in the next 24 hours. Um, yeah. To your point that the regulators, once they start shifting to this space, uh, it could be an entirely different story. You know, increasingly the regulators uh, and, and the regulatory issue is coming into focus. It absolutely does drive a lot of the sentiment in this space. Increasingly, we are seeing more and more conversations, even at an international level. We just heard from the Biden administration that there's going to be a 30 nation global conversation uh, that they want to congregate on uh, cybersecurity, cryptocurrency, uh, stable coins and the like. From that perspective, from your perspective in the ecosystem, in blockchain, in crypto at Zillica, from an Asia perspective as well, you know, um, and from a global perspective, how do you view, you know, these, these international nationwide global discussions that beyond lawmakers, governments, nations are having on the crypto space? What's your view? So I, I speak to friends who have some understanding of what their various different countries are, are, are trying to do. And I actually do see quite a lot of similarity in the way that different countries are approaching this. Now, obviously, if you look at what FATF is trying to do, this, this sits above the national level. And so whatever the FATF may bring to the table has to ultimately be implemented by the the countries that sit below that level. Um, the same holds true in some ways here, you know, in the EU, which of course we used to be a part of. Um, and 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 so, I my my own my own interpretation. I, I go back to what I said ten minutes ago. My own inter interpretation is: I think we're well beyond that point where large nations are looking at how they ban these things. I think that the, the conversation is not about any of that. It's about regulation, the right reg mm. level of regulation. And as somebody who comes from the, the, the traditional world, shall we say, um, into, in, into this brave new one, to, to me, the, the rails for things like traditional finance, you know, centralized finance, as people now, now call it space, um, I mean, getting the right rails between DeFi and CeFi, for example, um, building a market infrastructure, which is, again, a very hot topic on my personal radar screen right now. Building that, I think, is going to help the regulator. So, so what's interesting, I think, is that the infrastructure layer has, I think, a lot to do with whatever regulation and policy actually comes into play. And that's another three or four years away, in my, my humble opinion. And in that time, I think that if we can start to see this bridging between CFI and DeFi, for example, I think it's going to give a, a huge sense of comfort to those policymakers um, that that's where I see regulation going. I I think we're as I said, I think we're beyond the point of assets, digital assets going to zero and blockchains being mm -hmm. banned left, right, and centre. I, I, I think we're beyond that point, in my opinion. I think as it's defined by the technology, absolutely. I mean that is a that's that's a narrative that I think even the regulators and and everybody who's even just beginning to understand this space recognize that that is an old chapter. The new chapter is being written right now from your perspective, uh, you know, even defining it in the luxury space. So I got to get back to that because that sounds super exciting. Uh, does Zillica want to own this enterprise space from a retail perspective? Um, so I, I want to hear more about that as much as you can tell us, but then also beyond luxury. What's what's next? I want to hear about the yeah. the roadmap, if you will. Yeah. 
in certainly in terms of the the Zilliqa ecosystem, which, as I was explaining, is where is where I position myself today. You know, it's sort of like Zilliqa person on the outside almost. For for from my perspective, I think that there are two industries that are really interesting. Um, the the luxury the luxury world. I think for sure and and I'm not just talking about million dollar diamonds and necklaces because the luxury world does actually it 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 it, it goes to a much l- lower price point than that too okay so that 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 to me is one for sure and across the whole gamut of jewelry and watches to automobiles to to various other things I think there are there are there are two other industry segments. So I think this esports space and mm-hmm. and the, the the gaming space very 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 important. In fact, one of our you know one of my venture companies, Achilles. Um, I do believe you 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 know a little bit about Achilles and G Man who, who runs it has already been doing some amazing things during the lockdown between big cricketing brands and cricket fans, for example. And so I see the innovation, particularly in the NFT space, in the esports world, the gaming world, as being, I think it's huge. I think it's absolutely enormous. So you're going to see some some major activity coming from the Zilliqa ecosystem around that space. That's that's the the second one. The third one, Angie, which... um, uh, I have to say a little bit of a little bit of a passion project for, for me, other than the luxury stuff and the collectible stuff, is the music industry. Because I think that the plight of the artist is something that has dogged us for centuries and centuries. Picasso sold paintings so that he could have lunch, right? Um, he gave away paintings rather in, in, in a trade for lunch. So that he could feed himself, and I've I've believed for a long time that there are brilliant, brilliant artists out there who whose work will never come to light because they never get paid. And so, so I I certainly know here in London I know several artists who I've been encouraging to give up whatever else they're doing to come back to this space because now the blockchain technology allows artists of whatever sort, musicians and painters and sculptors, to, to be able to earn good money, um, you know, in a way that has never been possible before. So I, I'm a huge music fan. And, and the, I would say that the, 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 the third space that I'm really interested by, and again, looking at very closely, is, is, is the music space. And, and, and how we can take that a step or two further, particularly looking at it from the artist's perspective rather than the producer's perspective. Uh, i very, very interested in those, those. Those are the spaces that I think there's plenty to do with, within just, just those marketplaces. But I think those are, those are very exciting to me. Well, it just sounds like you've shared with us the next phase of growth for Zilliqa beyond the application of your, your new, you know, main net, but also exploring, you know, what new spaces that you could really have impact. And uh, I, I'm just very interested to see what that bricks and mortar store is going to look like. It sounds mm-hmm. extremely interesting and I can't wait to see it. And mm-hmm. I expect that we will be able to see it soon and I hope that we will. Um, but but Max, it's it's just really it's just really great to to connect. Um, we've been obviously following the story of, of so many protocols uh, for for a while now, and just to see the evolution beyond revolution now. Now we're in the evolutionary stage. Now we're in the maturing stage, and and yes. to see the application so specifically here that is encouraging and exciting non blockchain people into blockchain. I think for the entire industry and for the entire ecosystem, that's just that's just really exciting to hear. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just 
so excited about what can be. And I have to say that I've been spending quite a lot of my time talking to Zilliqa community members. Um, it's, it's amazing being able to talk to people whose who's, um, Twitter handles and photographs just don't do them any justice whatsoever. And uh, I, say that, I say that in a very positive way. I've, I've befriended some community members who, who are exceptional people from the world of fashion to legal to music to automobiles and taking in their inputs as community members and token holders I found to be so refreshing um, oh. I think I think the way we engage with these communities has to also also has to change a little bit you know um, but but I'm I, I'm an entrepreneur I want to know what it is that people want to see happen. And I don't just mean in terms of price point, that's a given, that's an obvious one. And yeah. uh, so, so yes, lot, lots, lots happening, my dear. Well, I'm so glad that you shared it with us. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, when, when you're ready to share more specifics, I, I yes. wanna see those blueprints. I want to see those. Absolutely, <laughs> you'll be you'll be you'll be getting you'll be getting an invitation to a very private event soon. I'm excited about that. We will absolutely cover it on behalf of our global audience, of which your audience is also included in that. Max, happy to always share, uh, you know, time with you, and thank you so much for sharing your time with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Angie. This is a this is a great hour. And thank you, everyone, for sharing your time with us here at Word on the Block. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast News. Until the next time.